Hello everybody, this is Maurice Kane from the city of David from MauriceLavos.com. Uh, today I would like to discuss a very, very important subject uh, about faith. And uh, the subject is more going to be discussing a response to a question. And this is a question. Why is it that Satan the devil is so obsessed about the faith of the Christian? Why? Why is he so obsessed? And to respond to that question, I'm going to visit or revisit a few questions, but I'm also going to discuss a few answers and responses. Hopefully, by the end of the video, you'll be able to value faith in another light, and you'll be, be you'll be able to better understand um, why is it that you need to remain firm in the faith, especially in these current end times. Now, first of all, before I before I clear further, uh, I, I would like to lead you to the book of Luke, chapter 18, verse 8. And uh, that passage is basically the end of the parable of the widow that was uh, provided by Jesus himself. And he says, he asks basically a question. He says, Jesus says this, However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? If Jesus is asking that question, Surely it means that there will be something happening, something negative happening to the level of faith, uh, to the level of faith of the church just before his return. And my suspicion is that the negative event that will precede the coming of the Lord will definitely impede or impact on the faith of the church. While when you think of wars, uh, pandemics, famines, uh, difficulties, economic poverty, and the betrayal and persecution that will occur against the church, then surely the level of faith of the church is going to be affected. It's definitely going to be affected. And this is the reason why Jesus actually asked whether he's going to find faith when he comes back. Now, the second passage I would like you to actually uh, read is found in the book of Luke, chapter 22. From verse 31 to verse 34 and uh, I'm going to read but before I read before I read um, I just wanted to actually introduce and explain uh, what uh, is going on so so Jesus is speaking to Peter Peter also known as Simon and he's actually giving him a warning he's telling him that um, Satan has been asking him, asking to sift him as wheat. And, uh, and I'm going to read the passage from verse 31. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift all of you as wheat. But I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. But he replied, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. And Jesus answered, I tell you, Peter, before the rooster crows today, you will deny three times that you know me. So uh, just to explain what's going on, um, Jesus is about to be handed over to his enemies and he is giving a warning to Peter. Now he's telling Peter that a Satan has been asking him, asking to sift, asking him. So Satan has been making a request to sift Peter and to torture Peter. But Jesus actually says one thing that is quite very interesting. He says, um, he says, but I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. It's interesting that Jesus doesn't say, I have prayed that you may not uh, suffer pain in your body. I have prayed that you, you do not fall into fear. I have prayed that you do not get, get discouraged. Now, he doesn't say any of those things. He says, I have prayed that your faith faith may not fail. Why is it that Jesus prays for faith? That's very, very interesting. Now, to better understand, to better understand why Jesus would prioritize uh, Peter's faith uh, against, against, um, against the attack of Satan, uh, then we should actually go to the book of Ephesians uh, from chapter 6, from verse 13 to 17. Now, before we read, uh, let me just tell you something. As a Christian, you are a soldier. You are a soldier in the army of the Lord. Okay? And uh, Peter actually 
describes actually the armor and armor that we're all supposed to wear as Christian uh, because we are definitely in a state of war and even now in the times that we're experiencing now we are now clearly entering another phase of the war against the force of darkness um, so i'm going to read the passage of ephesians chapter 6 from verse 13 to verse 17 and um, from there i will come up with a certain explanation a certain explanation as to why uh, jesus will want to pray for peter's faith not for anything else but he prays for so that the faith of peter does not uh, uh, fall apart And I read. So I'm going to read from uh, I'm gonna read in the book of Ephesians 6 from verse 13 to verse 17. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything to stand. Stand firm then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Now, I could actually explain a few more things about um, all the armor of God besides faith. But um, for the purpose of this video, I will only focus on faith. And in the, in the passage that I just read, faith is described as a shield. Faith is described as a shield which can actually help us extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Okay? So in other words, if we do not take up faith and if we let faith down, or if we just forget to carry faith when we go into the battlefield of war, it means that we are going to be exposed whenever the devil is going to send his extinguishing uh, flame of, flames of fire. And if the flame of fire, a flame of fire is going to catch us, then it means that we're going to burn up. So, and this explains why so many people who have actually lost their faith end up burning up when the devil attacks with the flames of fire. And that's one of the reasons why Jesus actually was praying for Peter's faith not to fail. Because he knew that if Peter's faith fails, then he's going to get burned up. And it, it's done. It's going to be a done deal. And that's the reason why I believe that the enemy, uh, the enemy, the devil, will definitely go after faith. The faith of the church. He's definitely going to try and work very hard and destroy the faith of the church toward this end time, just before the return of Jesus. Because the more he can take out faith, the more he can remove the faith of a Christian, then the more exposed is that Christian, and the more vulnerable that Christian is to the attack of Satan. Now, just imagine if a Christian who is supposed to carry his armor suddenly loses his faith, or lets the shield of faith go down. In other words, it means now that the rest of the armor, which is the breastplate, the, the, the belt, um, uh, the shoes, uh, the helmet, everything else that is exposed. Now, the enemy can, for example, go to the belt of truth and remove it because there's no shield to actually protect it. And when he removes the belt of truth, he can replace the truth for a lie. Um, this is what has happened to many people who have actually lost faith. They ended up being exposed and the devil came in remove the truth that was upon them and replace it with a lie. Uh, for example, we have so many people who are living identity crisis. Uh, they live identity crisis because they do not believe anymore. They do not have any faith anymore into what God says that they are. 
So because they have lost that faith, now the enemy, it was easy for the enemy to come and remove the belt of truth and tell them a lie. So now those Christians who have, who have lost their faith end up going around and uh, thinking something about themselves that is not true. So I'll just give you an example of how damaging and how devastating life can be whenever faith is failing. Um, so to my next point now. Uh, the second reason, beside, beside the fact that uh, 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 the loss of faith or the lack of faith can actually expose a Christian, expose the armor and everything, the second reason why the devil is so obsessed, so obsessed with attacking the faith of a Christian is because in Hebrews, in the book of Hebrews 11.6, it is written that without faith it is impossible to please God. So, if the devil can actually manage to attack your faith to the point where you lose your faith, then you cannot please God. It is impossible. So now this is now more of a double whammy for him. So not only he manages to get you to lose your faith and, or to turn away from your faith, but he also gets you to be in a position where it is impossible to please God. And this is one of the perfect scenarios for him, for the enemy, to find himself into where you can actually get a Christian to be um, uh, uh, in a position where you cannot please God. And that's it, you know. It, it's kind of like, it's kind of like um, uh, a very dangerous place to be in. Now, now I'm going to tell you now what are some of the tricks. Actually, I'm going to tell you one of the main tricks of Satan. One of the main tricks that Satan uses to before attacking somebody fully. And uh, the textbook attack that he has is actually found in the book of Genesis, uh, chapter 3. So uh, I'm going to lead you to the book of Genesis, chapter 3. And we are going to read uh, what basically he does to actually um, destroy his target. Now, before I read it, I'm just going to try to give a little context of what's going on in the book of Genesis chapter 3. So, after the creation, um, uh, the serpent actually comes into, uh, into a dialogue or into a discussion with Eve. And he's, the serpent is busy working uh, ways to get uh, Eve, Adam and Eve, to breach the command that God had given them not to eat from the forbidden tree. And, and the whole purpose of it is to make sure that they actually get into uh, some form of a conflict with God so that they can just lose everything and get out of the Garden of Eden. So I am going to read from verse 1. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? Mm -hmm. Just look at this. So the serpent is trying to um, put some doubts into the mind of Eve. Uh, what is the doubt? He's trying to put some doubt on the command that God had given them. Now, Roman, the book of Romans 10, 17 says that faith comes from hearing and hearing comes from the message, uh, message from God about Christ. Now, uh, our faith comes from hearing a message that comes from God, all right? And, and, and the message that we hear will basically, uh, um, will basically germinate if some faith in us, germinate faith in us, you know? So now, the enemy actually understands that principle quite well, and what he's trying to do is trying to cast some doubt on what we heard from God. And that's what he's doing with Eve in that passage in verse 1. So he's telling her, did God really say you must not eat from any of the tree of the garden? Now he's trying to shake a faith in the word of in the word of God, on the command that God had given them. Remember what I said to you earlier on, faith is like a shield. So if you can get her to actually lose that she, she if you can get her 
to actually uh, 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 throw that shield down, then she will be totally exposed, and then it can send the flames of fire upon her. Now I'm reading to verse 2. The woman said to the serpent, We may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it or you will die. Verse 4. You will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman. For God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Now, check again the strategy again, right there, right there. So now he's trying to contradict what God said to them. And this actually is happening quite a lot in the lives, in the lives of many Christians who have already heard something from God, whether it was through revelation or through the scriptures. And when Satan is trying to destroy them, he's trying to actually contradict what they heard with something, with a counter message, something that is countering. And, 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 and one of the subtle tricks is to actually tell them that uh, God is telling you that because he's trying to keep you away from something good, you know, something good. He's trying to keep you from, 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 from something good. You, you just need to actually um, bridge, bridge the comment. And um, uh, verse 5, now verse 6, let me read it, verse 6. When the, woman, when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. So between verse 5 and verse 6, something happens. Do you know what happens there? And that between verse 5 and 6, the woman lets her guard down. In other words, she actually throws away the shield of faith. She throws it down and she gets exposed. Now, in verse 6 now, she suddenly realized that the fruit was looking good for fruit. And she eats it. By doing so, she could not please God anymore. Remember what I said from Hebrews uh, chapter 11 verse 6? At that moment, because she could not please God anymore, she was not entering into conflict. Conflict with God and His rules and what He had told them to do. And this is basically perfect, a perfect textbook of what the devil, Satan the devil, likes to do when he wants to attack somebody's faith. Uh, this is just a trick that we should definitely be aware of and that we should definitely know. So, um... Uh, what you should do, basically, uh, stick to the Word of God, to what He said to you. Stick to what God said to you from the beginning. That is very, very important. Stick to His Scripture, uh, confess it, and let your life abide according to what He said that you should actually do. Let your life abide to what He said that you should do. Because if your faith goes down, the next thing that the devil will do is to send some flaming arrows against you. And it's very likely that if you let your guard down, you are going to burn up. That is something that we really don't want to happen, especially during these end times, when the attacks of the world and the attacks of the dark forces are going to increase against the church. I have hope and I believe that we can definitely overcome those things. It's not going to be easy. However, it does not mean that we should not be warned and let us um, get informed on the device of the devil. So stay strong in the faith, keep firm, and I know that you'll be able to go on the other side victorious. See you in my next video.